been unto them, and they to you. Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, for they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until ye perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. But they shall be snares and traps unto you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until ye perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have begun to give Sion and his land before thee. Begin to possess, that thou mayest inherit his land. Then Sion came out against us, he and all his people, to fight at Jahaz. And the Lord our God delivered him before us, and we smote him and his sons and all his people. And we took all his cities at that time, and utterly destroyed the men and the women and the little ones of every city. We left none to remain. Only the cattle we took for a prey unto ourselves, and the spoil of the cities which we took, from Eroer, which is by the brink of the river of Arnon, and from the city that is by the river, even unto Gilead, there was not one city too strong for us.
many Israelites, just like Christians, mistakenly believed that Ruth was from a heathen nation. When the Bible uses a terminology in Moabite tests in regards to Ruth, many make the mistake of believing that she was racially a Moabite, not knowing the geographical background or history of that region. She was called a Moabite not because she was racially a Moabite, but because she dwelt in a region where the original inhabitants' name had been left on that land. By 1450 BC, the complete land of Moab was an entire Israelite territory. Just to recap, the Moabites had been exterminated by the Amorites. Then the Israelites drove out and exterminated the Amorites. The Israelites occupied the land of Moab for the next several centuries.